<clears throat> on this problem, we're going to be subtracting fractions now. Um, a couple things to remember when you're looking at fractions, ladies and gentlemen, is you have to remember fraction has two parts. It has a numerator and a denominator. Okay, I'm going to keep on using that uh, verbiage um, or vocabulary for a while. So just want to make sure you guys understand you know, what a numerator and denominator are. So let's look at the first um, fraction here. We have subtracting. And a couple things I, I looked at when subtracting. First of all, I see a negative 3 fifths. And I see that the 3 is negative which is cool, okay, I understand that. Over here I see, and that's minus a four fifths. Well, I don't know which one is it, where this negative sign, you know, what am I actually subtracting? Is that, um, you know, am I subtracting the whole four fifths or how is this getting, you know, is this, is it just subtracting the four or the five or is one of them positive or negative? Uh, it's kind of getting a little bit confusing. So one thing that I want you guys to remember when you're subtracting and adding fraction, or just subtracting will do it, your denominator is always going to remain the same. Okay? It always remains the same. So you're only going to be dealing with your numerators. So when I do a negative 3 fifths minus a 4 fifths, I have a positive 5 on the bottom and a positive 5 on the bottom here. So I'm going to want to keep this as a negative 4 up top here. And I'll kind of explain a little bit more when I actually that problem is not going to be the same. but um, Because I'll show you, if I do a negative 3 fifths, Minus, I'm sorry, yeah, minus four fifths. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be subtracting the tops because that's I want my numerator to be the same. And a couple other videos you might have seen, you know, it doesn't matter if you make the a four of the negative or the five of the negative when you're dealing with um, if you're dealing with adding them. But as you're subtracting, this probably just making it a lot more confusing for you guys. What I was trying to what I'm trying to say is. 3 fifths, um, let's say if I made 4 and a negative 5, now these are not the same. So I can't, I can't subtract them because they're not the same, I'd have to get the same denominator, so I'd have to multiply by negative 1 again. So again, that would get me back to this answer. So I don't know if that was needed or not, but just remember when subtracting, keep the denominators the same, okay, and subtract the top. Negative 3 minus negative 4. You owe $3, you borrow 4 more, now you owe negative 7. However, it's not dollars anymore because it's divided by 5. Um, I like improper fractions. For those of you that are in the mixed number crowd, um, which I don't know. So what you do is you divide. How many times is 5 going to negative 7 without going over? It goes in there one time. How many are left over? 2 and over your, um, over your uh, denominator, and that's a negative. Okay, so that's the mixed number. I like all you guys to keep these in this area, though. That's how I want your answer. Over here, we have a lot of negative signs now. It's actually kind of like little steps. Um, so first of all, I don't have the same denominator. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get the same denominator. Over here, the same denominator is easy. You just subtract the tops. Over here, I don't have the same denominator, so I have to multiply by um, their I have to multiply by factors to get them to be the same multiplier. So we'll do the easy long way first, just so you guys can see it. Let's write out the factors. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. You guys can see I'm stopping because I'm doing the work in my head. 5, 10, 15, 20. All right, another way to obtain that is to multiply your 3 times 5, and that'll get you. It doesn't always get you the least, but a lot of times it at least gives you an answer that you can simplify later. So, sorry, I'm talking a little faster again as I get interrupted. Hello. Hello. Okay, so to finish up the rest of this problem, uh, what you're going to do is to get this to be 15, I need to multiply by 3. To get this to be um, 15, I need to multiply by 5. And notice I'm multiplying by the top and the bottom because to keep a fraction the same, you have to multiply by the top and the bottom, right? You guys know 1 half? Well, if you multiply by 2 over 2, that equals 2 fourths, which you guys all know is 1 half. However, if you do 1 half times 2, just on the bottom, that equals 1 fourth. 1 fourth is not the same as 1 half. I'll try to slow down my talking, sorry. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times a negative um, 15 is going to be a, uh, a negative 15. And then I have 3 times 2 is a negative 6. Minus a negative 6 over 5 times 3 is 15. 
All right, now we kind of came up to our problem we had last time here is we have like this, we have a negative 15 and a positive 15. Well, there's a couple things actually at work. One thing is I'm subtracting a negative. So therefore, that's actually going to, um, when you have a double negative, you can actually treat those as positive. So I'm actually adding now. And then here, remember, it doesn't matter if it's on the bottom or the top. Let's just put it on the top. It doesn't matter what your fraction, what your, what is negative, the top or the bottom. That means you know, your fraction is actually negative. So therefore, now I can actually do negative 40 plus 6, which will give me a negative 36 over 15. And I look to see if I can uh, factor this out, and I can. I can divide the top and the bottom by 3. 3 goes into the top uh, negative 12 times, and into the bottom 5 times. So make sure you always reduce your fraction, and make sure guys when you're dealing with subtract or negative or subtraction signs, just make sure whenever you have two negatives together, you can change it to a positive. And whenever you have a negative in front or on the bottom, just put it up on top so you can use your uh, common denominators. And that's how you subtract fractions.